Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of 3 you here for another Legacy video. Today we're going to be playing with a deck that I kind of messed around with a handful of times on this channel, which is Glimpse of Nature Affinity, and the majority of the deck list here comes from Sean S. Um, but I made a few changes. So, um, just general idea first, um, this is kind of a Cheerios style deck list, and what that means is we're playing Glimpse of Nature with a bunch of zero cost creatures. The text on them does not matter. They have different text, doesn't matter. Cheerio looks like this, right? Looks like a circle, zero, zero mana cost. Total, totally sensible and makes sense, right? Nods, nods, nods. Okay, yeah, uh, legacy deck names are super weird sometimes. So we're going to look to cast Glimpse of Nature and then play a bunch of free artifacts. And as we start this chain, more and more of our creatures are going to be free or highly discounted. The Frogmites, Sojourners, Companions, and Mirror Enforcers can all eventually become free, while Kappa Cannoneers and Thought Monitors will cost only a single blue mana. We'll also be playing around with Salvage Titans as an alternative win condition. So essentially what we're looking for with this deck is we're looking to uh, kind of storm off in the early game, or make a couple of large creatures, or just play out a Kappa Cannoneer that will eventually win the game somehow. Now, one of the big things that I did um, when Sean submitted this deck list is I added three more lands. Last time around, um, when I played this deck, I said I wish I had more starting mana. And so I've added two Tropical Islands and a Tangle Pool bridge to the deck list in the main deck, as well as one more bridge in the sideboard. Without playing some games here, and I realize how weird what I'm about to say is going to sound. I don't know whether or not Tropical Island or Tangle Pool Bridge is better within the context of this deck. Because the bridge specifically is an artifact land, so it reduces the cost of all of your affinity things. It will trigger Kappa Cannoneer, and it's something that I can sacrifice for Salvage Titan. Whereas the obvious upside of Tropical Island is it comes into play untapped for our green mana, which is going to matter both in the main and sideboard games. Sean's version had a grape shot in the main deck. I don't really think that's necessary. Um, my original version, I think, had both grape shot and Thassa's Oracle, and then I think I moved Thassa's Oracle to the sideboard, and then I think I cut it completely. I understand for certain fast combo decks wanting to have the grape shot finish, but I think most of the time, if you dump a whole bunch of like all all this stuff onto the board and then pass the turn, like I think that goes okay for you a lot of the time. Um, I previously did play Concordant Crossroads to give everything haste. I think that's reasonable, but um, there's this blue creature. It's called Murktide Regent. You might not have heard of it. I'm not, give, I'm not giving it haste. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Like, I, I'll die. Um, so I'm avoiding that card this time around. Um, Sean's original sideboard was built for their local metagame. Um, so I built something that I think would be better for online. So uh, essentially what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to have an extra indestructible land and a bunch of Carpet of Flowers so that versus Delver I can hard cast some of this stuff if it gets stuck in my hand or if we end up in a meltdown situation where a bunch of my lands get destroyed and my artifact count is super low. I'm playing an extra Salvage Titan versus Combo where we can just like floop a 6-4 into play on turn 1 and just like call that good enough. And then I'm playing Tormod's Crypts, which were in the original list as Graveyard Hate and also Zero Cost Artifacts, as well as Mind Break Traps for the unfair decks that might be as fast as us. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and hop into a league. And yeah, I've, I feel confident enough for a league this one. Uh, and let's see if we can put a win or two on the board. Like, this deck list has absolutely been a little bit sketchy in the past, but it's also been extremely fun. If you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing, and if you're a regular, please throw me a like before this video begins. That's one of the easiest ways to support my content for free. If you're in the financial position to support me and you find yourself watching regularly, you can do that via Patreon, YouTube memberships, or by doing a donation deck list to get one of your own decks on the channel. Here we go. All right, round one here. One, two, three. Three artifacts in play. Um, this, this just has too much fat here. Um, let's go ahead and mulligan. Turn one. Yeah. Um, I think I'll throw back my second land here. I'm very likely to find another one. Please, please not Delver. I beg you, Game Maker. Please don't be playing Delver. Let me, let me do my cool shit. That's an island, though. All right. 
please. I need this. I need it. Man, no, no, no. I want to do the jank. Come on, do it. Force of Will is ruining my fun right now. Um, I don't need to play anything else this turn because I can't get Frogmite into play. I only have three zero cost artifacts. That's a spell starter sprite in exile, by the way. Straight up fairies. All right. One, two, three, four. Cast Frogmite for free. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite where I want to be. I'm not that far off from it either. Um, we're really looking for some top decks here. We've got some cool ones like Kappa Cannoneer and shit. Oh, actually, I am pretty good here, right? I cast a Shield Spear. Sorry, Shield Sphere. Then I get free Frogmite. Then I can pay exactly two for this. And I get dazed here, but like, fucking whatever. Alright, cool. I mean, it, it's turn two. And after our cool thing got countered, we have six power in play. <laughs> Sad trombone noises. So my, my opponent's, like, not on Shadow, right? Because, like, they fetched with Polluted Delta. Ah, okay. So we're, uh, we're going, like, the ninja's route. How much mana is this right now? Two. Uh, I'll do this pre-combat in case anything weird happens to Frogmite. Frogmite, my son. Go and be free. All right, opponent's at 12. Like... That snuff out saved them a lot of life from mirror enforcer attacks, but it was not 100% free. Okay, yeah. Um, I also just have Ornithopter to block Ornithopter. Son of a gun. My other son. I don't know. Maybe Ornithopter's my uh, my daughter. You know, kind of kind of mix up the genders here a little bit. And we'll see. Oh gosh, Yuriko spikes Force of Will to hit me pretty hard. Okay. That's a that's a four four. That's a four four. I just hold this. I think I attack with both of these and offer the trade. I will absolutely accept one damage here. Or sorry. Um I will absolutely give up Frogmite if my opponent wants to just take that block to get in the four damage here. Yeah, that's that's fine with me. Because this retrofitter foundry making chump blockers in the long term. <laughs> Um, is a little rough. Right, now we're at the stalemate. I don't think I offer the trade again. It's like my opponent can just do this. So I think I'm holding back the team until I draw a glimpse or another cool thing. Um, the issue here is that like I know my opponent has Force of Will, so I'm just giving them time to get a blue card to pair with it. But it's fine. Like, <laughs> um, Eventually my opponent will start going in in the air. All right, um, Shield Sphere can block this. Um, when Shield Sphere blocks, it gets a negative zero, negative O counter. All right, I know my opponent's card. Oh, this costs three right now. Annoying. Uh, I'll play a different Shield Sphere. And I guess I'm just casting this. Again, keep my artifact count high. I'm not great in this situation, but all it takes is me resolving a Kappa Cannoneer. And then, like, I just attack in and it's lethal. Um, but this, uh, this grinding that the Retrofitter Foundry stuff is doing, I'm not super well equipped to deal with. Alright, um, I'll block one of those. I think I'll take four and be fine with that. Uh, that's more Shield Spear. Now my opponent can just, like, block sack. Uh, this is this is an awful situation for me. I'm going to play one more of these and call it a turn, but I think game one's over here. My opponent just gets to do this end-of-turn nonsense in a way that I very much do not like. Okay, there is a fetch to two. And, uh, I don't know. Like, there's worlds where my opponent attacks with too many creatures and I crash in, but a bunch of these things, uh, like, obviously have zero power. All right, there's two attackers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six is probably fine as well. Let's take one chump block here and be okay losing a creature. Eh, yeah. Um, 
My pawn's got active force of will and a giant board here. I I think I'm done, though, folks. Yeah, do your thing. Badness on the stack resolves. Opponent's at one. I guess that means the force of will is not pitch castable anymore. Um, and now my opponent's just making flyers too. All right, let's let's move on. I think this one's over. Do I want carpets? Carpet seems medium. Like, I just want to resolve a Kappa Cannoneer or a Salvage Titan that's immune to snuff out and kill my opponent. These larger creatures are also totally fine and good. I'm not sure that I'm actually going to sideboard. Like, my opponent has a bunch of basic swamps that make carpet noticeably worse. And I'm not expecting, like, artifact wipes from my opponent's deck either. I want one more Salvage Titan. Let's do a Salvage Titan over a Frogmite. I don't know. It might be better to just replace one of the seven drops. Oh, I got math. One, two, three. I can salvage... I can Sojourner's Companion on turn two. Because on turn one, I have one, two, three, four, five. Like, two mana towards it. Oh, wait, what if I do double Mox Opal? So, one, two, three artifacts controlled. Cost is four. One, two, three. No, just short. Um, I think I keep this. I'm not going to do anything super cool on turn one. But turn two should be hot. Like, I could just go all in on a Salvage Titan, but I'd rather go Salvage Titan and Companion on turn two. Um, which ignores the cost for this. And, like, this is this is why I want the Artifact Plans. And if I can end up doing this in a way that lets me keep Ox Opal in play so that I can just sacrifice it to Salvage Titan, like, that's pretty cool. Memnite. Okay. So, prop. Ornithopter. Memnite. Opal. How much do you cast? Currently cost three. You're dazable. That's fine with me. Because I want to sacrifice that Mox Opal to Salvage Titan. We'll go Opal, Feet, and probably Ornithopter here. And then I can go ahead and put Mox Opal in play as well. Yeah. All right. I, I like I did the day's check here. Thought I passed that check. Yeah, so I tried to do this in the way that lets me keep my Mox Opal. So I can get this back and convert Sojourner's Companion into Salvage Titan. I don't think that's worth it. I really thought that Sojourner's Companion was worth dazing. My opponent disagreed. Oh, that's why. Okay. Attack. Raid. Salvage Titan. All right. This is a weird world I'm living in. Yeah, figured that out. That's fine. So let's do this. Exile one, two, three artifacts from my graveyard to bounce that back. Cast an Opal. Cast a Walker. Load a mana. One, two, three. Sacrifice that as well. And I've got a Salvage Titan. Now, my opponent can jump block this forever, in theory. Um, we'll kind of see where things go. That's particularly rough, actually. Because that's just another X4 creature immediately, because that's a Thopter. All right. Ate this for me. Yeah. And now I just need to get to three artifacts again to replay this. Um, I, I just don't know that I can beat, like, the 4X Retrofitter Foundry deck. Like, I, I just don't know that this is happening. This feels very tough. Because <clears throat> my Memnite can't really attack. This is not going anywhere right now because my um, count is too low. This may be the point where I just, like, accept that my deck has not done the thing and just, like, move on to the next round. You know, I, I think I'm going to do that. I, I think we're... I think we've tried to do our thing. Our thing has failed. Like, let's move on and keep this video flowing. Round two. We're going to attempt the turn one. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to always yield to that glimpse of nature, and we are going to have a good time here. Buckle up, folks. It is turn one glimpse time, baby. Um, this will be my fourth artifact in play. Making both of the frog mites in my hand absolutely free. 
Another glimpse. One, two, three, four, five. This will be six artifacts. I think I have the mana to do this. Especially since Lotus Petal can cast some of the stuff. Like, we got second glimpse. You've had first glimpse, yes. Second glimpse is even better. Oh, yeah. Thought Monitor. Yeah. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six. This will be the seventh one, making the Sojourner's Companion free. Absolutely. All right. So I can now Thought Monitor. And that's a draw four. That's a lot of mana, but we're doing okay. Oh, yeah, there's a Kappa Cannon here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want a glimpse. I think I want a glimpse. I think I am in for that degree of avarice. This Mox Opal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, more than good. Cast another glimpse. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kappa Cannoneer, draw three cards. Yeah, that's right. And and this is why you don't need um grape shot in your deck, right? Like if I am going off this hard on turn one, very few decks in the format will beat me. Okay, um my opponent has no tournament results um on Magic Online. Given that, I'm just gonna whack the submit button and we'll adjust uh to something if we lose this game. Um uh, does his hand make six power on turn one? Um, one, two, three, four, free frog might. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It does, it does make six power on turn one. Is that good? Sure. So hard to evaluate hands with this deck, because, like, the, the hands that are insane are obvious, and the hands that are mediocre, like, can fall apart in a lot of different ways. So this is looking like it might be a Carpet of Flowers matchup. That is a shuffle with that ponder. All right, well, let, let's make some power and see where this goes. Like, it's I'm a little worried that this is just going to be, like, kind of a frog might do nothing hand, but we shall see. Lotus Petal into play. Play out a creature. At this point, frog might is free. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I'll play the Ornithopter and save the bonus Mox Opal in case I need the mana later. Uh, but I don't really want to give up either one of these right now in case I do have a cool combo turn. But I'm very much expecting something like Source of Plowshares on Sojourner's Companion, and then I'm kind of reliant on drawing... Um, oh! I have different thoughts about what deck my opponent is playing now. I choose no. Alright, you know what? I turn one you, you turn two me. Fair. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven permanents. I can keep one permanent in play. Um, but I don't have an instant speed win in the deck. Yeah, I I am dead here. Not immediately, but over the course of two turns. My opponent's got it. So I gotta go fast. Um, carpets feel medium to me. I'm very much fine with keeping hands that go all in on, like, Kappa Cannoneers and Salvage Titans. Like, those are fast. Those are going to help race my opponent's hands, because my opponent is also just going to keep fast show-and-tell hands. So my Mind Break Traps don't super disrupt that well. Board out, like, one Mirror Enforcer. Actually, maybe one Spot Monitor for another Salvage Titan just as something else that can go super fast, and call that good. How fast does this Kappa Cannoneer enter play? One, two, three, four, five permanents. How much does this Thought Monitor cost? I will have four artifacts, meaning that this costs three. Not quite right. This one's so close. I'm so close to just turn one Kappa or turn one Thought Monitor. I get, I get to those cards with just about any draw in my deck other than, like, Tropical Island. Does that mean this is a keep? I don't know that that means that this is a keep. I'd like to do something cool on turn one and kind of force check my opponent. Uh, awkward. I probably keep this and pitch the Mirror Enforcer. Um, this is not quite what I wanted, but it probably gets me to where I want to be on turn two. And I think that's fine. Actually, um, I, I made one boarding mistake. Um, I probably am supposed to board in the Grape Shot for this matchup. Um, let the record show that I thought about that after sideboarding was over. 
My opponent has mulligan to five. So they could have been mulliganing towards a force of will. They could have been mulliganing towards their own combo finish. Like, either one of those things is pretty good. All right. Um, this is a very good turn for me if this glimpse of nature resolves. Um, so let's see where this goes. Okay, they were mulliganing towards force of will. Um, I can probably cap a cannoneer next turn still. We'll see. Like, opponent could just go, like, ancient tomb and I die. Like, that is absolutely a thing that could happen. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, this exactly casts Kappa Cannoneer this turn. Um, so we will do that. Uh, so we'll tap down our creatures and hope this resolves. Um, this is going to be a fast clock. Because in all likelihood, this attacks for six, then seven, then eight. Not 100% of the time, but that's probably what happens. All right, there's the fetch. Oh, okay. Uh, opponent on their mulligan to five had Force of Will plus Show and Tell. Um, that's pretty gross. Oh, is this just a Grizzlebrand? That's beatable. As if they hit the Petal plus um, Emrakul that I die. Otherwise, this is very beatable. All right, opponent's all in. Okay. Did you find it? Uh, seems like yes. Okay. One, two, yeah. Um, so this is just lethal damage in the air, unfortunately. Um, GG's. Not a super interactive game here. <laughs> Alright, um, round three here. Uh, I can go one, two, three, four artifacts in play. Frog Knight, five artifacts in play. Turn two, any artifact as a draw gives me Kappa Cannoneer, which would be six artifacts in play. Really, seven, because I would have drawn another artifact. I think this makes turn two Kappa Cannoneer and Mirror Enforcer the vast majority of the time in a way that I'm comfortable with. All right, let's do the thing, shall we? I don't know, I guess like lightning bolts and stuff can happen to Frogmite in a way that is not pleasurable to me. So like maybe I don't vomit all of this stuff in the board. Like I just play bridge and pass. I don't know, like the two life is relevant. <laughs> I'm gonna need this list. I got you, but no promises that it's good. Ooh, are we burning or are we red prisoning? Goblin guide, we're burning against my Phyrexian walkers. I have O3s! What are you doing? My O3 Phyrexian walkers are unbeatable! Alright, um, so this will be a Memnite here into Kappa Cannoneer. And we'll uh, improvise all our creatures here. And then I get to play free Mirror Enforcer. I did say no promises that it's good and then play turn two Kappa Cannoneer. All right, cool. And then free Mirror Enforcer. Um, yep, yeah, okay. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was good. That was, uh, that was impressive. All right. We got the pass the turn here. I can now play Seat, which actually makes Kappa Cannoneer unblockable. Um, we'll crash in with Frogmite. You know what? Gem Knight, my son, get in there. Get in there, buddy. Yeah, because I, I that's kind of where I thought that was going. Oh? Lightning Bolt, a Frogmite. Absolutely. Uh, opponent's at 12 and is probably dead next turn. Like, I don't know... Uh, well, I, I guess they can theoretically live another turn or two, but the Kappa Cannoneer is just uh, an absolute beating here. Yeah, I mean, whittle, whittle him down. And a Lava Spike, sure. Got, gotta use the mana somehow. Memnite throws the Kappa Cannoneer. Then uh, I believe that is 12. All right, we did not get our Mirror Enforcer Fire Blasted. Okay, um... This game is going to go relatively fast one way or another. Luckily, most of my stuff that matters have big booty. <laughs> um, so, I want one more big booty in here. Man, Eidolon is going to be really good against me. I wonder if I play an extra artifact land to make it easier to salvage Titan. I don't really think Thought Monitor is very good here. Like, I want to play these other threats out instead. And... Like, I can play Kappa Cannoneer into these colorless ones, um, but it's much harder to, like, do Kappa into Thought Monitor or something. 
How fast do we do the thing? Three artifacts on turn one and play a Frogmite. I'll control four artifacts. I don't think this hand gets there. This hand can go Bridge, Memnite, Bridge, Frogmite, Saxum Land, Salvage Titan, and have a Kappa for a little bit later. I think this hand is medium, but I think this hand is going to be good against Eidolon, which is something that like I would be keeping my hand based on if I were the opponent here. Um, we will take two here. Oh, we got a land. I don't mind that. Another Salvage Titan is not great. So, um, if my opponent has Eidolon, I'm supposed to play out the Memnite, and if they don't have Eidolon, I'm not supposed to play out the Memnite. I'm doing that. And then I'm not going to play the Memnite. Like, in the worlds where I draw a glimpse, it's so good if I just have this extra creature in hand. Holy power and toughness, Batman, though. Oh my gosh, it is the glimpse. The glimpse on top of my library. Delicious. Uh, we're going to go hard here, folks. So this is three of tails so that I can keep open a blue-green land. Play Glimpse. Just playing around things like Mind Break Trap here. So there's the Memnite. Mm. Really wanted to draw a zero drop there. So it goes. Okay, there's a zero drop. Um, now we do have Salvage Titans um, to help kind of continue our chain here. We'll play Petal. Ooh, we might be in Mind Break Trap territory. Opponent really likes my deck. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six artifacts, which means this costs one. I am fine playing this. Okay, I think we are now past Mind Break Trap really mattering. Uh, let's go ahead and Mox Opal. Lotus Petal. And there's six for Kappa Cannoneer. All right, okay, sorry. I need to do this for blue so that I can improvise with this. All right, there's the Kappa Cannoneer. Uh, we don't really want the bonus lands here, but that's okay. All right, Kappa grows. Now I can Salvage Titan. Um, I'll Junk Opal a land and like an Ornithopter here, I guess. Um, I just want to try to continue the chain. Okay. Salvage Titan, draw two. Lotus Petal, Glimpse. Back like one, two, three. Fuck it, why not? Let's go. Sacrifice. Maybe I sacrifice the Lotus Petal. One, two, three. Do a draw two. This is very fun. I am enjoying this a lot. Is it actually good? Unsure, but it's super cool. Okay. Um... Is this good enough? No. No, it is not. Let us continue the pain. All right, let's yield to Kappa Cannoneer at this point. Um, and then let's vomit things onto the battlefield. Um, let's play Mox Opal. I don't want to tap all of these creatures. I want to tap some creatures that are worse. It'll result in a slightly worse Kappa Cannoneer. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. This is nice. Um, play a Memnite, get some junk cards, play another Memnite, uh, yeah. Um, at this point, it's probably fine to do this, do this, do this, two, three, four, five, Kappa. Um, I do have to watch number of cards in my library a little bit here. Uh, let's play another companion. These are draw threes. Um, there's an opal. Keep this one. Uh, I guess I don't actually want to play that quite yet. Play a couple fatties first. Um, let's do this. Yes, yes, yes. Um, at this point, I could probably play another Kappa Cannoneer. One, two, three, four. Five, six, play a Kappa. All right, nine cards left in the library. I, th I think we can call it a turn there. That's pretty good. Feel pretty confident that we will win the game next turn. 
And I am going to discard a bunch of cards at random. Okay, this is what I've kept. We're outside of range of things like Meltdown. Yeah, Smash Up Smithereens is totally fine. <laughs> Opponent says, got him. I respect it. Okay. And the, the opponent, after asking for my information so that they, they could get the deck list, has conceded. Uh, GG's. Alright, round four. Um, this hand kind of does nothing, right? Like, I play tree, three walkers, I control four artifacts. These cost three mana. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm on board with this one. Hello. This is a keep. Kana has gone to five. I think I'm supposed to keep Mox Opal over second land here because of how good I'm hoping my turn one will be. Um, we'll see if we just die to Reanimator on turn one. Here we go. Volcanic Island. I think it's too costly to play around days. And I also think my opponent's show and tell. Like, Delver very rarely mulligans to five like that. Yeah, I, I think I just gotta do this. All right. We are off to the races. All right. Uh, okay, that costs too much for right now. Um, let's go ahead and play this Opal. Then I can go ahead and Shield Sphere. Ah, shield Sphere. Look, it looks like there is a spear coming out of that. Um, Kappa's cool. We'll absolutely Kappa this turn. Nice. More Frogmite. Yeah, we're ripping pretty well here. One, two, three, four, five, six in play. One, two, three, four, five, six in play. Um, let's make that seven in play so that I can cap a cannoneer around or no I don't want to do this quite like this yet um seven in play means that I can do this all right um let's play another companion thought monitor is good uh, I think I want to start here at this point though one two three four five six and then I can just like grow this kappa <laughs> Say what you will about the deck's consistency, but when it does the thing, oh. All right, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm going to assume that my opponent is on Snake and Show. Um, I think I didn't board last time versus this deck, or maybe I boarded in like a Salvage Titan. Um, yeah, rationalizing that this is over quickly. Let's board out a couple of Thought Monitors and board in one more thing that I can go all in on and then a Grape Shot. I think I'm good with that, and if I'm wrong and this is Delver, uh, like, I'll board in the extra lands and carpets and stuff and go from there. Um, this is going to, at minimum, make a Salvage Titan on turn one. That's fine. Like, let's let's see where this goes. Okay, yeah. Getting the, getting the sneak and show vibes. So, here we go. Let's cast some stuff and then kind of, uh, See where we end up. There's another walker. That gives me Frogmite for free. That's five artifacts. This is six artifacts. Meaning that that costs one mana. And then I can go ahead and do this. Sacking one, two, probably three. And uh, assuming this resolves, I have 12 power on turn one. Okay, it resolved. I guess if it didn't resolve, I just sack these three things and cast it again, because I have exactly three artifacts in Graveyard to return it. Uh, uh, okay, Impulse. Alright, so opponent is looking for, like, Soul Land, Show and Tell, Idiot. Soul Land. Show and Tell. Not Idiot. Oh, there's the Idiot. Alright. GG's. Alright, look, my, my turn was cool. You didn't have to shame me like that. Your 15 power versus my 12. I think I'm supposed to do what I just did again. Tangle Pull Bridge might be better than Thought Monitor. Um, just for getting Salvage Titan and this shit into play. Like, I am I am not trying to grind. I am just trying to murder. Um, is this enough murder? Three Mox Opal. Field Sphere, Memnite, Memnite. Salvage Titan sacking like one, two, three. Have my opponent on a three turn clock as of turn one. Assuming no force of will. Alright. Maybe not the ideal hand, but here we are. Playing Magic the Gathering. 
and uh, preparing for Savage, Savage, Salvage Titan Beats. Pass by sacking three artifacts. I think I just, uh, well, do I keep? There's Ancient Tombs in the deck. Got a drop in hand. Yeah, maybe I just keep all of my power in play. All right. What you got? Also, notably, I don't think I'm supposed to uh, board in Mind Break Traps here. They have Fringe Utility. Um, but they're not super good. And Kappa Cannoneer is a great draw, by the way. It's a great thing to put in off a of show and tell. Um, I had some other thought coming. I don't remember what it was. Uh, Mind Break Trap. Um, yeah, anyway, I don't think I'm supposed to board those in. They have Niche Utility versus, like, the um, multi-spell turns. But... There's a lot of times where, like, your opponent just goes show and tell, Emrakul, and then, like, they cast one spell. And that is what it is. See if my opponent can turn to me. Uh, very possible. There's the land. Okay. Here we go, Kappa Cannoneer. Do your shit. All right, there's the Omniscience. Okay, that should deterministically kill me. So that is going to get Firemind's Foresight. The Firemind's Foresight will then get two cards that don't matter and another Cunning Wish. The And that's just essentially value. The Cunning Wish then gets um, something that allows them to get Emrakul in one capacity or another. Uh, and there's a few different ways that they can do that. That Emrakul does beat me. Yeah, there's triple Emrakul. And I am fine conceding at this point. Um, GG's. Like, there's, there's a lethal amount of damage on the board, but that does not matter. All right, um, this is round five here. Um, I have one, two, three artifacts. Can't cast Frogmite, can't do this stuff. Um, this one's going to be a mulligan. I think I like this hand probably with the intention of trying to go off on turn two rather than immediately. Um, so let's just play Bridge and Pass. Like, I could attempt this turn, but I think I just fizzle too much of the time. Oh? Oh? Oh, okay, we're playing against the Riddler. Uh, which is the, um, all-in. Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah, this is fine. <clears throat> so they used a bunch of resources, um, to kind of protect here. Um, so I think I'm probably good. Um, we should be off to the races here. Defense Grid is active, uh, meaning that the Force of Will type cards are uh, not necessarily doing their thing. I'm going to want to board in the Grape Shot in this match, um, though, so I can win the same turn if I start going off really hard. Um, um, fortunately here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I probably want to play this land to leave Mox Opal available. No, that's not true. I'll have the option of either, still. And if I wait, then I can play seat afterwards at some point to go and uh, trigger the Kappa. All right. Um, so I imagine I kill next turn. I haven't mapped out how much power I have because it's kind of hard to read Kappa Cannoneer. Um, not going to lie to you, but it feels like lethal amounts. Nine... 10, 11, 12, 16, 17. Ooh, maybe not lethal next turn. It's 18 if I didn't count a land in my hand already. All right, what do we got? All right, whenever you discard a card, you can exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you can play that card this turn. Okay, cool. There is a Tree of Tails. I am fine just playing a Mox Opal for one more point of damage in case that becomes relevant. Throwing the Kappa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bastion for a billion D. And my opponent just eats all of that and goes to two. And uh, we'll see if my opponent can kill me this turn. It's somewhat likely. This deck has a really high win percentage. I haven't really played against it much in its current iteration. I tried a deck that looked like this much, much earlier. Like... I don't know, like six months ago or something like that. And it just like wasn't polished and didn't feel good. All right, cool. Um, we are playing against an extremely fast combo deck here. 
I probably like Mind Break Trap, despite the fact that it's gonna clog me, like clog up my deck a little bit. I probably want the Grape Shot so that if I go off hard, I can win. Although at the same time, um, adding Mind Break tra Traps to the deck makes it very unlikely that I can actually do all of the things. Name it Construct a Trigger. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play that card this turn. So I can play Tormod's Crypt as interaction as well. Um, I just have zero, zero games in versus this deck, um, which honestly I think is one of the advantages of playing that deck is just like people haven't played against it much yet. I'm not really in on Thought Monitors here. I think Thought Monitors become Mind Break Traps. I'm unsure about Tormod's Crypt or just like another Salvage Titan. Is my opponent going to board out Defense Grid versus my deck, actually? Because if my opponent is going to board out Defense... Like, I think my opponent boards out Defense Grid, but if they think I'm bringing in something like Mind Break Trap, then I shouldn't actually play this. I think on the draw, I want this. Yeah, let's try this and not board in the Grape Shot on the draw, but board in the Grape Shot on the play, maybe. Um, okay, this is a hand. This is a hand. This could be a keep. It can go one, two, three, glimpse, salvage, titan, draw a card. Any land makes this hand much better. Like, much, much better. Lotus Petal makes this hand insane. Um, I think on the draw, I'm going to keep this one rather than Mulligan. Like, this is a little risky, but I think I'm slow on the draw anyway. So I'm going to just kind of hedge and just keep something powerful here. And uh, we'll see what happens. I am a filthy lucker. Absolutely disgusting that I just top decked like exactly the card that I wanted. I don't need to play around days with Mox Opal or anything here. Uh, so let's glimpse. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, this turn is very likely to be extremely strong at this point, um, especially if I can get to the point where I can get the seven drops into play. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four, five artifacts. So this currently costs two. Appa, I have four mana towards. I can keep going with a Salvage Titan. It's just a little awkward. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and cast this. And I think I go one, two, three, sacrificing Opal. Get a Memnite out of the deal, and we're hoping to hit enough artifacts to uh, start chaining into Kappa. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five artifacts in play. One short of Kappa, and I can't do this either. This is two. This is one more than I have. Okay, I'm stuck, but this is a lot of power still. Um... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, this is just a two-turn clock that I produced on turn one. That's fine. Well, I guess my opponent can make, like, Urza Saga tokens, and, like, that's a little awkward. I also don't know how proficient at playing this deck my opponent is. Because if they know what they're doing, I'm much more scared than if they don't. Okay. Make their Urza Saga um, token smaller if they were to double crack Lotus Petals in order to do that. I love that draw. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or five artifacts, so this costs two. The next one would cost one that I can't pay. I think I'm just going to do this pre-combat in case things get a little bit spicy here. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Here we see the tropical island, like, not being an artifact land, being a little bit of a downside. <clears throat> Urkel's Recall. I mean, understood. Okay. Okay. Um, I have already played my land. I can vomit some of this stuff back into play. And I guess I take back what I said about that being entirely a downside. Two artifacts. This costs too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. I guess I can junk a salvage titan and just get that back later at my own convenience. All right, so we're going to see floating mana, and then I presume, like, a Lion's Eye Diamond or something like that. I had the perception that this deck was faster than this on average. Okay, land drop. 
All right, Storm is one. Three mana. Two mana. No mana. Well, the one floating still. Storm is two. Okay, they're just going to kill my Mem Knights. Uh, I mean, okay. It's happening. Okay. Inconvenient for me. Uh, but not the end of the world. So let's go tree. Ornithopter. Frogmite for two mana. I could get a Salvage Titan into play, but given all this shit that's in my hand, I think I just chill. Like, if I can get some of this stuff out of my hand, I will vomit cards everywhere. Bobble is fine. Construct is fine. Alright, and we're just chilling. Sure. Okay, there is a seat. Fantastic. Uh, so this is four total artifacts. Meaning that this costs three. Looking at Kappa Cannoneer next turn, I think. Fine, attacking on in with this. I do not expect a trade. I'm very wrong. Uh, absolutely. And I, I think I'm good. Like, I've got, I've got so much stuff stuck in hand here. That I think I'm just good with where I'm at. I don't know, I just, like, really feel like my opponent's containment construct that... Their deck is, like, built around is much more valuable than my Frogmite. The Gamble is fine. Gamble discards Breakthrough, which is very strong. I have a Mind Break Trap available for probably the Breakthrough, but it could be whatever's in my opponent's hand. That is an Echo of Eons. They're going for the Breakthrough instead. I probably just have to stop that. The Echo is still a problem. But if the Echo waits until next turn, I probably can't um, Mind Break Trap it anyway, unless I draw another land, and I don't actually have that much land. Alright, so... Not draw a cheap artifact here. Means I'm bashing in for 4. Opponent goes to 16. We'll play a Sojourner's Companion, uh, which unfortunately does cost me all of my mana. And I have one, two, three, four, five artifacts. This costs two. At this point, I probably just have to increase my clock here. Walker, Opal, Memnite can go. And I will Salvage Titan. Dunking some stuff and trying to leave roughly a lethal amount of power in play. Maybe I should have gone all in on this uh, Salvage Titan earlier. But, like, I was really hoping to get all of these things out of my hand, um, but that didn't happen. Like, my opponent traded Construct um, in a way that wasn't super profitable for me. All right, opponent didn't um, get the necessary mana or an Echo to happen, um, which is good for me. Chain of Vapor is interesting. I will not sacrifice a land. Um, I'm just going to try to put my opponent on a two-turn clock here. My opponent has so much more interaction than I expected. Um, yeah, this will just be my turn. God damn it. I was about to say, my opponent literally needs to draw Ancient Tomb. Alright. Um, my hand doesn't have a Mind Break Trap, unfortunately. Alright, let's see how bad this is. Because with a Containment Construct in play, this can be very bad for me. Alright, Riddle Smith is under Chrome Mox. Another Opal. All right, there's a breakthrough. Um, this is extremely powerful with containment construct. So normally this is a uh, like something with a huge downside because you only get to keep like one card. Um, but with containment construct, the thing that just happened uh, is about to happen, which is that breakthrough is much closer to just a raw draw spell here because all of these things can just be played for free, um, and the discard is not a real loss. I think needle is fine. I don't think that does anything against my deck, right? Okay, yeah, that's fair. I've put my opponent into a situation where they have to chump block, though. So this is extremely good for me. And then the Ancient Tomb also won't be a real mana source. And the guard that's under here also will be gone. Um, so this is all uh, just absolutely fantastic for me. Yeah, so there's the required chump block. Opponent goes to two. I mean... Like, I came here to do this, right? Like, I came here to do this. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, 
five artifacts in play, six artifacts in play, seven artifacts in play, three. Mindbreak Trap is fantastic. Kappa Cannoneer, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Draw a card off of that. Yeah, let's always yield to this. We are doing the thing. Um, I get one more look here. I've already played a land. I can sacrifice a couple of these do-nothing cards. Um, to just make some bigger bodies here. And at this point, I have fizzled. Okay, well, like, I say I've fizzled, but, like, I have very much presented lethal, and I think it's very hard for my opponent to beat um, Mind Break Trap without, like, using Ancient Tomb. I don't know, they can have another Hercules or something, but... Promox absolutely happens. Imprinting a Karn. That is not gonna do what you want it to do. Okay, uh, and we end up with a 2-3 in that league. I wonder how experienced our last opponent was. It seems to me like they over-sideboarded. Um, so I'm a little sad that that was my first experience playing against Riddler, because like I want to I see what that deck is capable of. All right, overall thoughts on the deck list. I think most of the other times that I've played this, I've gone like 05 or 1-4 or something like that, and we put up a pretty respectable 2-3, and I think... Had we not just, like, gotten paired against Show and Tell, like, I think we could have put up a better showing. Like, I, I think this is a deck that can 3-2. And I don't know that I felt that way about other versions. I really liked how much smoother the deck felt with a couple extra lands in it. A couple extra lands means that you fizzle uh, once you're already starting a glimpse a good portion of the time. Um, and that's okay. But... Like, in those worlds where something goes wrong, some stuff gets removed, and you have to try to force some of these larger things into play, um, like, I really like the flexibility that having a couple extra lands allows. Again, not sure on number of Tangle Pool Bridges versus Tropical Islands and whatnot, but I, I like having about this many more lands. Um, I'll say that some cards in this league definitely underperformed. Um... The seven drops didn't look great this league because of the Salvage Titans. Like, the Salvage Titans cannibalize your artifact count, which makes continuing to play these sorts of things out harder. And because I was going further in on Salvage Titan, I often ended up cutting Thought Monitor, which is a pretty respectable card and something very good to hit um, during the Glimpse combo, since it kind of makes up for the times that you hit extra lands. Um... I, I like the things that I have access to in the sideboard. I still feel pretty good about not needing the Grape Shot. I think you can pass the turn a good portion of the time and be okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think this one gets a thumbs up from me. Um, it's still a little janky. It's never going to be a Tier 1 Legacy deck or anything like that since it can't really interact with your opponents. But it's super cool, it's super fun, and it can do a lot of powerful things fast. Um, I don't know if I mulliganed enough. Like, I kept some pretty sketchy hands. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. But given how powerful, like, Tree of Tales, Glimpse, and a couple of zero-cost artifacts is, maybe I should have been mulliganed into, like, five more. But at the same time, to get these things into play, you need a density of artifacts. So I'm not sure exactly where we end up in that regard. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, though. Uh, so thank you very much to Sean S. for uh, sponsoring this league. I hope you enjoyed, folks. If you did, please leave me a like on the way out if you're not subscribed already and you made it this far. Hey, think about it. I'm around for a lot of jank. Have a great rest of the day. See ya!